good morning and welcome to our first service of 2024. So their combination being the Sunday we celebrate the Epiphany, but also being the first Sunday in the new year, traditionally it's Covenant Sunday in the Methodist Church. Today we have our annual Covenant service. And we hear these words from Paul in Romans chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, sisters and brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Our opening hymn of praise combines both themes, particularly the words of the final verse, remind us that God's covenant can never be renewed. We, we do sing, Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son.
we now continue our worship with our prayers of adoration and the words will appear upon the screen. So let us pray. Glory to the Father, the God of love, who created us, who continually preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who, though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin, who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, who was raised from the dead as alive forever, and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him, who is seated at God's right hand in glory, and will come to be our judge. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think. Blessed be God forever. To the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory forever. Amen. And the collect for Covenant Sunday is God of grace, through the mediation of your son, you call us into a new covenant. Help us, therefore, to draw near with faith and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We know how today's Bible readings, the first one is a passage set for the covenant service from John chapter 15, read to us by John, followed by today's reading for the Epiphany from Matthew chapter 2, read to us by Sylvia. Thank you, Andrew. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he trims clean, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I am in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given. This is to my Father's glory, and you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen. <clears throat> I'm reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, entitled Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? 
We saw his star when it came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah. For from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child. And when you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were! What joy was theirs! It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Amen. To reflect upon those readings after we have our next hymn, which is the Epiphany Carol, As With Gladness, Men of Old. words we found in John chapter 15 when Jesus said just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me we need to be close to God to feel God's strength and to grow and today in our covenant service and also being the day we celebrate the epiphany 
linked off here of how we grow in our faith through worship. Remember the opening words I shared with you, the appeal of St. Paul. Therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. But often when we focus upon the visit of the Magi from the East, we perhaps rather get hung up upon the gifts and what the gifts mean. What gold and frankincense and myrrh would signify later when the Christ child becomes a man, I've been speculated for centuries. Today, my theme is not so much about the gift, but about the main thing which the Magi brought to Jesus, which was not the gifts. But when they saw his mother Mary, they bowed down and they worshipped him. One aspect in the Methodist covenant service is to review how we worship. And in our confessional prayers that we will have later, we are reminded for the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace and our hesitating witness for Christ. Is worship one of our priorities as we enter 2024 and we renew the covenant promises when we say, I am no longer my own, but yours. Promises not just made individually, promises also made together. Whether a handful of people gather physically or perhaps uh, through Zoom or electronically, whether it's made by hundreds or thousands of people, it doesn't matter, the promises remain the same. And that commitment also is the same. And we are also reminded as well of God who promises that only by his presence can we fulfill these promises. And he is always with us. Today, a fairly sort of, uh, as we share our worship together, and that is a story I heard a number of years ago on a visit to uh, uh, Mephtis Central Hall in London, where a chap called Malcolm White, who at the time was the minister of the church. He shared his upbringing in Cornish Methodism and perhaps was fairly low church. But being quite an intelligent boy, he passed the 11 plus and got a scholarship to the Exeter Cathedral School. He also had quite a good voice and was in the Cathedral Boys Choir. But he still had that strong nonconformist Methodist trait within him. So when the choir boys would enter the cathedral, rather than perhaps as the other boys did, who would bow their heads towards the altar, young Malcolm refused to do it. So the choir master had a quiet work with him, saying, Malcolm, why do you not bow your head as the other boys do? And from a very low church Methodist background, I said, I don't believe in worshipping the altar. But when the next occasion to lead worship, he did the same. This time it was reported to the headmaster of the school. Headmaster also had similar words with him. Then he said, perhaps, Malcolm, you'd have a conversation with the Bishop of Exeter. And the bishop came to see him. He was summoned to the bishop's office and the bishop said, um, young whites come in and have a chat with me. I understand from the choir master and the headmaster that you refuse to lower your head when the other boys do when you enter the cathedral. To which young Malcolm White replied, I don't believe in worshipping the altar. And the bishop also said, I don't worship the altar either, he says, but I lower my head when I enter the cathedral to lead worship. But when I see the cross on the centre of the altar and the candles beside it, I'm reminded of Jesus with the light of the world and the one who gave his life for each one of us. However, I do bow my head before saving grace. And young Whitey says, perhaps a time will come you also will bow your head before saving grace. 
and for the Magi from the East, who perhaps travelled maybe thousands of miles to come and offer their gifts to follow the star, the one who was born to be king of the Jews, and to find a very ordinary child and a very normal family in a house. They did not leave disappointed, but they bowed down and they worshipped him. Indeed, a theme throughout Matthew's gospel is the worship of Jesus, human but also divine, the one who makes sense of the worship, the focus of our worship. Remember later in the Gospels, when Jesus walks on the lake towards them and Peter comes out of the boat, when he calls Peter back into the boat, the disciples worship him there. And at the very end of St. Matthew's Gospel, after the resurrection, when he meets them in Galilee, there they worshipped him, even though some doubted. Was it the right thing to do to worship this man because they knew he was God? And may worship be our priority this year as we enter 2024 and we renew our covenant promises. Amen. We now return back to our slides once again as I read uh, the preface to the covenant. And then obviously I have already referenced our confessional prayers, which I will then lead us into after we have the preface to the covenant. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love and finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him, all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities and fail to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. Have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love, 
in the fullness of your mercy. Blot out my offences, wash away all my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again, and strengthen me with a willing spirit. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. And thanks be to God. And before we share in the covenant prayer and promises, we sing the hymn written especially for this service by Charles Wesley. Come, let us use the grace divine and all with one accord in a perpetual covenant join ourselves to Christ the Lord. And now we come and share in the covenant prayer together. Again, we will turn to the slide for the first version of the covenant prayer. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. 
eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in this gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do, in all that I may endure, when there is work for me, and when there is none, when I am in trouble, and when I am at peace, your will be done. When I am valued, and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment, and when it is lacking, when I have all things, and when I have nothing, I willingly offer all I have and am to you, to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. And let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. We now respond to that prayer by praying for the needs of our world, our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. As we have entered this covenant, not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, Hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one, that the world may believe. Inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Establish justice and peace amongst all people. Have compassion upon all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. And now we pray in silence for our own needs and for those of others. Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers, and you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world, grant that we may truly know you. And in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For now is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. 
Amen. The covenant service always concludes with the celebration of Holy Communion, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, to which today we will celebrate after our next hymn, which is As Your Family Lord, See Us Here. elements of bread and wine we will share in a few moments time but first a great prayer of thanksgiving so let us pray god our father fountain of goodness creator of all that is you have made us in your own image You've given us life and reason and love for one another, setting in our hearts a hunger for you. In darkness, you are our light. In adversity and temptation, our strength. You bear patiently with our folly and sin, granting us your law to guide us and your prophets to renew our faith. In the fullness of time, you came to us in love and mercy, in Jesus Christ, your living word, full of grace and truth. He lived among us, declaring your forgiveness and revealing your wisdom in works of mercy and in his word of power. For us, he suffered and died upon the cross by death, destroying death. You raised him from the dead. You exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your people, gathered together in every time and place to glorify your holy name. And with them and the whole company of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy. Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, Lord, we obey his command with this bread and with this cup by which we recall his death and resurrection, the source of our life and salvation. Grant that we, who share in this holy sacrament, may be united by your spirit and grow into perfect love. Bring us with those who have done your will in every age into the light of your presence and the joy of your kingdom through christ with christ in christ in the power of the holy spirit we worship you in songs of everlasting praise blessing and honor and glory and power be yours for ever and ever amen The things of God for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to God the Father. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me will never thirst. Therefore, friends, we draw near with faith. Therefore, if you wish to share with me and you have a piece of bread with you at the moment, when I say the body of Christ to keep you in eternal life, we will share the elements together. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And if we take the cup, the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Faithful God, with these holy gifts, you have fed and strengthened us in Jesus Christ, your son. Guide us on our way that with all your faithful people, we may come to share the feast of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Though the theme of our focus has been worship, and our final hymn is, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
And we conclude our service with the blessing. The blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.